All right, first we have Liza Cooper, who is a social media manager, consultant, and blogger focused on helping consumers refine their online personality. In the past three years in the field, she's worked with startups, New York City entertainment venues, management consultants, and Columbia University's chief digital officer. She's blogged for CNET, The Huffington Post, Politica Exterior, and her own website, ElizaCooper.com. In her spare time, sounds like she wouldn't have much, but she enjoys training for triathlons and exploring the city. And the presenter to follow up to Eliza is Michael Cush. And Michael is currently the Director of Workforce Development and Training for Adults at Visions. His responsibilities include ensuring that quality adult employment, vocational skills training, and information services are provided to Visions consumers in a timely and efficient manner. This entails oversight of all vocational training and adult work readiness programs, job placement services, as well as blind line information and referral. And for, for, prior to joining Visions, Michael spent over eight years working in human services as a case manager, customer service rep, and info and referral specialist. And he graduated from SUNY Stony Brook with a Bachelor of Liberal Arts and a dual degree in psychology and sociology. So since we've lost a little time here, I guess we'll get started right away with Eliza and each of our presenters is going to speak for about 20 minutes. We're going to go. Are you going to, oh, I'm going to switch off and I'm going to just try and keep track of the time and leave, you know, about 15 minutes for questions at the end. So if you could hold your questions until they're done, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Can we, actually, is my could just give a sense of the room first? I always like to start off um, who, by a round of applause. Who in here is blind? <laughs> and of those people, who who uses uh, an, an iPhone or a smartphone of any kind? Uh, yeah, who doesn't know what a smartphone is? <laughs> touched on um, particular news uh, apps 
NPR is a good news um, app because you can listen to local NPR stations to get local feeds, or you can go to just the overall national. There's a lot of good programming. Um, I know myself and my career services coordinator, we tune into NPR. There's a lot of uh, news stories and programming related to workforce and development, market trends, labor trends, so on and so forth. Um, so we get a lot of good information from there um, that we'd like to share with our clients. Um, another news, I also have a local news app, which um, has been going off all morning because of what Eliza was saying before about what's going on in Boston. Um, so the alerts on that are kind of um, fairly regularly uh, dispersed. So um, that's a good news app. I also have sports news, ESPN app. Um, for you sports people, and that's programmable for any sport you want, any team you want. Um, if you're a really huge sports uh, person and you want to know what's going on with a bunch of different teams, a bunch of different sports, that thing could be going on all day long. Um, also, there's a, specifically a baseball app called At Bat, which is one of the most accessible apps I've ever seen. So you can watch videos and scores and schedules and everything. So luckily sports has come a long way in accessibility. Yeah, it really has. Um, in fact, the first time I bought that app in three years ago, it wasn't very successful at all. Um, and the good thing about that is a lot of people, blind people especially, can be very vocal. And they will um, contact the developers and say, hey, listen, these buttons are unlabeled can't switch the screen, things keep popping up, it keeps refreshing, so, um, you know, they have come a long way, and people uh, do make a difference when you uh, report your grievances to the developers. Uh, there's a, a couple other news apps that I use. Um, there's one called Dig, D-I-G-G, -G, um, and Dig is really useful. It has headlines from all different categories. Um, and the nice thing about it is that you can read any of the articles and you can also share them via email or Twitter or Facebook and all that's really easy to do. Uh, I was gonna demonstrate that one, but honestly, all the headlines are depressing, so let's just <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but Dig is really good and then Mashable started out as a social media um, reporting site, but they have a lot of tech news as well. So Mashable is also really accessible. Is that M-A-S-H? Yeah, M-A-S-H-A-B-L-E. Who knows? <laughs> um, and then the BBC News app is pretty good. I like to listen to negative things in a nice British accent once in a while. <laughs> so, uh, okay. That finishes that category. Um, a couple other notes about navigation. Uh, thankfully, Judy and, and Doug took some off our list so we don't have to discuss as many. Um, there's actually one thing that I do. Uh, does anybody here know about the Address Translator website? No? Uh, so, it's a government website and it's really hard to find because it's you know, got a million slashes. <coughs> yes, exactly. So no one really knows about it, but, uh, but if you contact me, I can send it to you. Um, so um, I'll, let's give it at the end, just so we can, everyone can be ready to write it down, I guess. Yep. Um, so Address Translator is a website where you can go in and put in an address anywhere in New York City, and it will tell you what street it's on, uh, what side of the street it's on, and which streets it's between. So for example, it might say, okay, 55 Lexington, um, when you're facing Third Avenue, it's on your right. Uh, and for me, that's really useful because not all GPS apps do that reliably, although more and more can do. Um, so what I did was, I went to that website on my iPhone, I saved it to my home screen, I don't know if any of you have done that, but you can save a link so that it appears on your home screen. So whenever I need an address, I can just, I can set it up as an icon and go to it that way. Um, 
Also, Hopstop, does anybody use that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hopstop is kind of tricky. It's not the most accessible thing, but it, it works. And uh, so you can get subway directions really, really nice. Um, also, I don't know if anyone here uses the Maps app that come, came on the phone. It kind of got um, kind of got some negative reviews because it wasn't all that great and they weren't using Google Maps anymore. But there's one thing that it does do. When you're exploring your neighborhood, it has a little sound effect. So when you move your finger around the screen, it supposedly is supposed to sound like someone walking. Um, <laughs> it's kind of odd, but it does have a little footstep sound effect, and it also it. The, the sound will kind of graze in pitch if you're going off the, the street. Um, so it'll read what street you're on and what intersections you're at. And so if you, like me, move to a new neighborhood or you're in a new neighborhood, you kind of just want to know what's, what streets are around there, it's kind of a nice way to do it. Uh, any other um, Well, Navigon is a good app. It's not a cheap app. I mean. A lot of these apps we're talking about, some of them are free, a lot of them are free, and most of them are relatively inexpensive. Navigon is probably about, I don't know, 25 bucks now. Um, uh, um, but it's, you know, it's cheaper than an off-the-shelf uh, portable GPS, which is not accessible anyway, so. Um, it, it gives you, you know, you pump, punch in a direct, um, an address. It'll uh, give you directions either by walking, give you directions by, uh, now they have transit in there, or <coughs> driving directions. So let's say you're in a cab, the cab driver doesn't know where you're going, you give them an address and they, they pump. Um, do you know how to get there? Well, um, I've run into that many times. And uh, so that, that's a really good app for folks using that. Like I said, you can do walking, um, you can punch in whether you want to go the shortest route, the quickest route, whether you want to go by ferry. Um, so it, it, it's a pretty good app, and it's very accurate, and it's very uh, voiceover friendly. Um, I think the one thing is, I mean, it, yeah, it's prohibitive because of the cost, and it also uses a lot of battery. Yeah. But um, compared to the other ones, I mean, to Ariadne GPS or to the, some of the other ones that are out right now, it does more and it's more accurate. So I'd say it's it's pretty worth the price. I interrupt for a second. Um, I believe, and Bill, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that we're going to have a list of all the apps that'll be available on the <coughs> website where the the information about the entire symposium is going to be posted, and it's also. Every session is being taped, and so you can revisit this session or refer somebody else to it. So I just wanted to make a note of that. So if you didn't get the spelling correct about an app, don't worry about it. It yeah. will be available. That's a good point. I was going to say at the end, too, I'm going to write a blog post, which includes all the apps we're discussing. Um, so it'll be up on my website, and I'll give that to you at the end. Um, and yeah, as she said, it'll be on YouTube in about a month. Um, OK. A few apps that I use on the job, which I've discovered recently, and these apply to use sighted people as well. So everybody will find these really useful. Um, so on the job, um, I work primarily online. I do a lot of email, don't we all? Um, there's one really interesting online tool that you can use called Nudge Mail. And Nudge Mail allows you to just forward emails to yourself to come back at a different time. So for example, uh, maybe Mike and I, we had emailed about what we were gonna discuss today and how we were gonna do it. Uh, and I know I need to save that, but I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna forget that I have it and I want to, I wanna be able to find it the day of, right? So I could have just forwarded my email to Nudge Mail and told it when I want it to come back. So what you do is you forward it to April 19th, 2013 at nudgemail.com, and it came back to me at 6.30 this morning. So it's really useful. This can, and you can also just tell it to give it back to you a few hours later. So if you're going through your email first thing in the morning, oh, my boss emailed me, don't want to deal with it, 
You can force it to a few hours later. Um, so nudge mail, and it's not, you don't even have to go to a website, it's just, you just have the email address. Um, another one, let's say uh, after this conference you have a whole bunch of new tools to check out and a whole bunch of new vendors and you've got all these websites you have to go to, you need a way to organize them. So another thing I do, whenever I find a new tool or an interesting article, I forward the link to Pocket. Pocket is a way to just store all your links, um, and it's really easy to use. It's just a website that you can visit, um, which is pocket.com, and it just, you, you create an account, and then it'll just have literally a simple list of all your links, and it'll have the, the URL, and it'll have the title of what that page is. Uh, and you can search them later, so that's really easy. Um, lastly, on, on, in this category, uh, for me anyway, is uh, there are a lot of to-do lists coming out. There are some on the iPhone, there are a lot online. Most of them have apps as well. Um, most of them I've had trouble with. Um, not a lot that have a lot of features are really accessible, but there's one that I recently tried, which I'm really excited about. Um, also because it has an adorable name, so it's called Toodle Do. <laughs> And it's a, it's a website, it's also an app, I have not tried the app yet, but it allows you to create a to-do list, and it also um, will guess which tasks on that to-do list should be at the top. So based on, yeah, based on when the end date is, or the deadline is, or what time you put it in for, when you go to that day, it'll sort it for you. Uh, and you can also collaborate on projects, so maybe I have a client and I know we're going to be working on this uh, calendar. I can just create a, a list on to do, and uh, then I can uh, share it. Later. 